On the stage, modern or Shakespearean, exemplars, Charles Wyndham, high comedian, Osmond Turrell, deceased 1901, exponent of Shakespeare. Did the host encourage his guests to chant in a modulated voice, a strange legend or an allied theme? Reassuringly, their place, where none could hear them talk, being secluded, reassured. The decocted beverages, allowing for a subsolid residual sediment of a mechanical mixture, water plus sugar plus cream plus cocoa, having been consumed. Recite the first major part of this chanted legend. Little Harry Hughes and his schoolfellows all went out for to play ball, went out for to play ball. And the very first ball little Harry Hughes played, he drove it o'er the Jews' garden wall. He drove it o'er the Jews' garden wall. And the very second ball little Harry Hughes played, he broke the Jews' windows all. He broke the Jews' windows all. How did the son of Rudolph receive this first, this first part? With unmixed feeling, smiling, a Jew, he heard with pleasure and saw the unbroken kitchen window. Recite the second part, minor, of the legend. Then out there came the Jew's daughter, and she all dressed in green. Come back, come back, you pretty little boy, and play your ball again, and play your ball again. I can't come back. And I won't come back without my schoolfellows all. For if my master he did hear, he'd make it a sorry ball. He'd make it a sorry ball. She took him by the lily white hand and led him across the hall. Until she led him to a room where none could hear him call, where none could hear him call. She took a penknife out of her pocket and cut off his little head, and now he'll play his ball no more. For he lies among the dead, for he lies among the dead. How did the father of Millicent receive the second part? With mixed feelings, unsmiling, he heard and saw with wonder a Jew's daughter, all dressed in green. Condense Stephen's commentary, one of all, the least of all, is the victim predestined. Once by inadvertence, twice by design, he challenges his destiny. It comes when he is abandoned and challenges him reluctant, and as an apparition of hope and youth, holds him unresisting. It leads him to a strange habitation, to a secret infidel apartment, and there implacable immolates him, consenting. Why was the host victim predestined sad. He wished that a tale of a deed should be told of a deed not by him, should by him not be told. Why was the host reluctant, unresisted, still, in accordance with the law of the conservation of energy? Why was the, why was the host secret infidel, silent? He weighed the possible evidences for and against ritual murder, the incitations of the hierarchy, the superstition of the populace, the propagation of rumor and continued fraction of eridicity, the envy of opulence, the influence of retaliation, the sporadic reappearance of atavistic delinquency, the mitigating circumstances of fanaticism, hypnotic suggestion, and somnambulism. 